Maybe it's time to get serious about that. Just for your own good. This isn't working. Yeah. Yeah, I, I just, yeah, I guess there's no excuse. I mean, if you want to keep going down this path, you know. You, you, it's getting worse. Yeah. My balls totally moving, new and improving, not that we can work We might need a new, <laughs> I might need a new iPad. Sorry. <laughs> this can't be good for you. Yeah. <laughs> I, I Wait, should I take my glasses off now? Is welcome that... to the show, Dr. Drew Thank Pensky. You. Thank you. Thank you. Cheers. Pensky in the house. I didn't want to be the only one without sunglasses on today, so. Fair enough. Yeah. It's a pretty cool room. It's awesome. I love this place. Yeah. Seriously. Yeah, I like it. It's pretty cool. It's very cool. It's a beautiful neighborhood. A little, little bit of, you know, airport traffic here. It's there. very it's quiet, like... except for the airplanes. <laughs> <laughs> but the aeroplanes are, I don't know, they're just not that, uh, is the word, evasive? Mm -hmm. mm, maybe not. You maybe want you more barrel rolls? No, I just Thank don't you. feel like it's too, like they don't see me in the backyard naked. They just oh, sort of in, whiz in, by. In, in, invasive. Trust I me, when I take invasive. out from Burbank, I will be looking next time. Yeah. Well, <laughs> if, that's, if that's what's going on back there. Oh, it's gone, Drew. Yeah. Yeah. Bring your binoculars. <laughs> yeah, it's a festivity. Mm. It's not, uh, last night I had to uh, accommodate. My daughter wanted to come over with her friends to use the jacuzzi. Yeah. And it was her and her girlfriend and two guys. Uh-oh. Yeah, and I was like, oh. My God, how old is she now? 18. <gasps> I know. <sighs> I know. Like, whatever they're doing. That's is, right. I can't say anything. It's no, not my well, you can say something. You can't do no, anything. No. Yeah, I would, I would, saying stuff would make it worse. Yeah. I never say Usually. stuff. Usually, yeah. Um. I told my manager last night, and she said, you should start doing some push-ups and sharpen or, or clean your guns. <laughs> and I was like, <laughs> it's not, I don't think I need to do that. I already look. Oh, you look scary, yeah. yeah. I think the guys are, are they scared, afraid of you? Uh, no, I mean, I, look, they seem like uh, they, 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 they were working on uh, their album, their uh, hip-hop artists. Of course. And they were working on beats. Uh. In the uh, bedroom. <laughs> the beat lab. Yeah, in the beat lab in my daughter's bedroom. <laughs> I'm not supposed to say stuff. All right, but they, they seem like they seem like nice people. And the only thing that's funny is my daughter and I had a laugh that uh, this morning I went to check out the area and there was some giant eyelashes on the side of the jacuzzi. And I was like, "Did you lose your eyelashes last night?" She's like, "They're not mine, Dad." And my friends. I'm like, okay. Is no she problem. now graduating high school? Is that yeah. where she gone? Yeah, uh, she's got a job and uh, she's also going to school now to, um, she wants to be, what's that called, Katie? I'm when, not sure what she landed on. Is she going to be a nurse? Yeah, she wants to be a nurse, but she wants to be the one that gives like Botox and all that stuff. Oh, yeah, eventually, yeah. So she has to get the go through the, yep. get the degree, then yep. she can start doing a med that. Spa, med spa stuff. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, you know, and I was like, that's a good idea because if you get good, you get clients, you can start your own business. I will tell you, I'll warn oh, you now. Yeah. No, it's a great idea, and I fully support it. Was doing that, that or a school teacher she, she was thinking of? And I was she, like, she definitely. made the right call. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> She'll like this, but, uh, but it's kind of loaded up here, so I want you to prepare. She might have to move to go get. The, right. the career she wants. I think that she has similarities to me when it comes to that. Yeah. I think that she'll go to Australia. If for the career, she'll go anywhere. Yeah. Good. Well, good. But as long as you're cool with it. And you know that people are actually dissolving a lot of their injectables at this point now too. So it's taking a bit of a turn. You mean it's time industry. to go back around and have another set or? 
Yeah, what does that mean? People are stepping it down. They don't want the big lips anymore. Oh, yeah, they don't yeah. want the, oh, yeah, yeah. The, the butts they're taking out. Yeah. yeah. It's weird how this stuff follows these trends. Yeah. yeah. It was all boobs, then it was all butt, then it was all lips, and I, I, I don't get it. Yeah, so you know what, though? I always remember I had a girlfriend years ago, and whatever the new style in pants was that year, i have never forget she said, I hate that I know I'm going to like those. <laughs> And I said, what the hell are you talking about? Yeah. She said, those are so stupid, but I've seen it before. Enough people will wear them that, that I will. I like it. I will. And she wasn't saying that she was a follower. She was saying, I will acquire a taste for that. I, That'll start I, I to look good to me. I completely understand that. That is the human foible, right? Right. And I never thought, I always thought, well, one thing we'll never see again. Thank God. Bell bottom. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> right. Katie's laughing. Yeah. <laughs> so they be Jason's, back. Jason says afflictions already back. Yeah, oh, give me bell really? bottoms all day. Yeah. No kidding. Yeah, and stuff that looks like it, like, like a, a Tom Hardy looking thing. Yeah, it's all bad. I, I was Ed like, Hardy. hasn't Tom Hardy been uncool twice Ed already? Hardy. <laughs> Who? It's Ed Hardy. Oh, oh sorry. yeah. We, I knew what he was talking about. <laughs> Tom Hardy's I'm dead. Glad I said it in. Tom Hardy's an actor. <laughs> oh yeah, he's that. Yeah, he's been. So he's hey, been. Right, yeah. <laughs> I missed you. Are you doing okay? Yeah. Hmm. I'm all right. Yeah. I'm not really, but yeah. I'm all right. I gotta be, you know. Yeah. So. I want yeah. you to be. Yeah. I don't sleep that much. Katie and I are, are I don't want to. It's know, okay. Okay. You figured if I was coming, this was, this was the deal? Yeah, I didn't. I okay. said to her today, I was like, I don't know if we're going to talk about it, I don't, but I want to make sure you're okay with it. Otherwise, I'll just say I don't want to talk about it. Yeah, you don't talk about anything. But if she's okay with it, I'm okay with it. Katie? Yeah, go ahead, Jason. <laughs> yeah, so we're getting divorced. And, oh, um, you know, it's my, it's my fault. I'm hard to deal with. What? I and, would imagine. Yeah, right. And then, um, you know, I can't stop my penis. I just keep doing things that I shouldn't be doing, even when I'm the leash is so loose. Well, let's, well, let's talk about that for a second because that, that is an interesting... I think she's had enough. Well, it's an interesting topic for me, and I've kind of gently brought it up to you a few times, mm. which is that when, when the leash is fully loose, it's, it's just hard to predict what people are going to feel. Eventually, somebody has something they feel that they don't anticipate or a connection well, to somebody I else that they start going off with. And I don't want to speak for Katie, but yeah. I think she's gone the opposite way when it comes to sleeping around. Like, she doesn't really, isn't that interested in it. Yeah. And I've become more into it, but also more, you know, I think there was a time there where I did it. And, you know, my therapist kind of helped me with it. It was like, you know, you don't want to do stuff that's a thing that you're reacting to from your childhood. Right. You know, so my, me being abused, you know, according to my therapist and myself, where we worked for years over it, you know, I was doing stuff to get back. Reena the, reenactments, we yeah, call them. Yeah, so Traumatic then, reenactments. But, so then but, it became liking but, somebody to before you hook up with them. Yeah, and then that happened, and then the gay. I think the gay stuff just it got in. too much. Stepped like in. I feel like you know, once at my birthday, she said so. She was drunk, but she said that she, you know, she's like, "Am I a beard to you? Am I your beard?" And I was like, "Can I, I? If anyone knows me, it's yeah, her." Yeah, and if she thinks that, can can I? Yeah. I feel like I know you pretty well too. Yeah. No. Yeah, I know. No. I know. No. But she didn't mean it. Like she's No, it's a viable question. She said she didn't mean it, but, but just but the maybe thought she's... she ran it through her head, which means It was an exploratory question. I, I get just it. like because I get it. you've been evolving and changing and like getting to know yourself better. It was an exploratory question. It came out like horribly and I did apologize for that. But No, but I get why you would why you would say it, why you'd think it and you want to check in. As as you're going off a certain direction, maybe that's now not that it had been, but maybe that's not what she's become to you. Yeah. I don't know. Yeah, yeah well, I still don't think that I could date, <laughs> like, live with a man. And I, I I just feel like I've always been dependent on somebody, you know? Like, I've always had somebody there. If I break up with somebody, it's only a year before I'm back in it. You know, I've pretty much just had three people in my life, you know? I had, you know, 10 years, 10 years, 10 years. And then they get sick of me or I can't control my urges. You know, I'm always, I'm an addict. It's like things yeah. that always come. I do too much Kratom right now. You know, oh. I can't stop. Dude. Yeah, I know, dude. I'm in trouble, dude. Well, why don't we uh, start going back to some little 12-step action? It's free. It's available Because they right keep now. telling me I can't smoke weed. I'm not doing that. Maybe it's time to get serious about that. 
just for your own good. This isn't working. Yeah. Yeah, I, I just, yeah, I guess there's no excuse. I mean, if you want to keep going down this path, you know. You, you, it's getting worse. Yeah. Everything's crumbling around me. Uh, yeah, I comedy's mean, the, going good. The, the sex, the cranium, the weed, it all, go, it all goes together. It's all the same thing, right? What do you mean? It, it's all that addictive process, all of it. Yeah. Sex, great, and weed, it's not, it's not, those are not, for you, not different things. I'm not saying for everybody. I'm yeah. saying that's how it's all tied up for you. And sometimes you got to decide, is, is it worth it to me to keep living like this, to be able to take great and smoke, smoke weed, or do I need to try something else? And how far do I have to go before I change it? But it breaks my heart to see you guys uh, this way. kills me. Yeah, I don't know what I'm getting into. No. Yeah. But I already, I did it, you know? There's no taking it back. Mm -hmm. So, I think but I've it's better for everybody if I just live by myself. Mm -hmm. Was that a yes? Yeah, I agree. I mean, I gave you a lot of chances. And, uh, God, yeah. this is why this, this part, when you loosen it up too much, it gets so crazy. It gets too complicated. Humans aren't designed for this. Right. You, know what, you, you know what I'm saying? Of, of course I do. You know, it's like democracy is the least bad political yeah. system. Yeah. I've always said monogamy is the least y bad yes, yes. romantic I, arrangement. I, I think it's, I, love, I wish, I think it'd be really super crazy fun if people could just be that way and not have consequences. And, and, I, and I look at somebody, I've, it's been, I've actually added it up the other day, 17 years I've been, and I used to enjoy not having a girlfriend so I could hook up with anybody I wanted to. Yeah. 17 years and I know that I could just go off and do a thing one time and it could be so much, it might be terrible because those things are always a crapshoot, but it could be so much fun and it would mean nothing and I could go back to my life even if I could had a time machine and I could erase it afterwards, it would diminish your intimacy. I know it would. It's so and crazy. And that's what I'm saying. And that sucks. So every one of them. It does suck. Because especially the male, you're like, I want to be, why can't I do that? It's just kind of Why like, can't females do that? They could, should be able to do it too. But we just, we, we're not wired for it. It's like we're a just, pick your poison. It's like when you go yeah. on vacation and you're in Hawaii and you're having such a good time that you go, what does a house here actually cost? And you look at the thing, it's like, do you want to live in Hawaii yeah. and give up what you have yeah. living in the, on the mainland, or do you want to not go live in paradise? Because there's there's no perfect solution. And so this is what he's struggling with now too, with the weed and the kratom and stuff too. Which, is, but this, but his brain is going far. Jesus Christ, I'm not used to talking to you <laughs> without that word. <laughs> How many years were you on FM? I'm just saying, I'm talking to Jason. I'm yeah, like I know, I'm in this I, living room. It's definitely you, you actually. Right. No, no, it's not your fault. I'm just not used to talking to you. Without, it's not your imagination. Without, without you're talking a, to Jason in his living room. <laughs> <laughs> it's, true. it's true. It's true. It's true. That's the problem. It's too, it's too, it's too familiar here. But uh, yeah. hey, you have, you have friends. Yeah, you, you got friends that pull for you. Yeah, and I don't feel like reaching out to them. Yeah, tell us. Part of me wants to just end it. No, you can't. You can't tell me stuff like that. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, well, I should probably, like you said, maybe change it up. I just feel like fifty. Cry helps right around the corner. You always here. You just fail every time when it comes to that stuff. You find a way. Cry, cry help is right, right around the corner here. Who what? Cry help, right around the corner here. What is cry help? It's a good program. Doesn't sound cool. It's a good one. What? So I have to go and live somewhere? Oh, I bet they have an outpatient thing. Oh my but god, do. dude! I'm just saying, if you're gonna, if you're seriously, you know, I don't know what to tell you to do. I'm too close to you. I shouldn't. I shouldn't even be advising. I'm just here to support you. That's the deal. That's the deal. Uh, I feel too much around this guy. Yeah, I'm sure you have the same feeling. Sure. Yeah. <laughs> no. <laughs> no? I always feel like my job here is like there's, th I could make the work easier. You know what I mean? And I, and I, the work of us doing our job yeah. easier, and that's the best way that I can be helpful uh. is to know, for Jason to know that whatever him is coming to the table to do a show, that he doesn't have to worry about the thing going off the rails because I can hold that bit up. Yeah. And I hope that that's a valuable service, yep. you know? Yep. I'm going to make it, you know? I always right, make good. it. All right, that's what I like to hear. Because that's, that's true. I mean, that's, that is always your thing. I just feel bad for everybody else, you know? 
Like who? And a part of me is just depressed that I do this to people that I care about. Who do you feel bad about? Katie. You know, her whole life is hanging out with this jerk off and then I go, fuck everything. And she's got no choice. I don't know what she's going to do. Hmm. And I'll worry about that. Um, I just feel bad that I, you know, that I did it again. I can't stop. And I'm old and I've tried. You know, I got, oh, I got out of a lot of stuff, but it just seems like maybe all the pressure of losing my job at Sirius, maybe I just... Running away from started that. Started running again. Yeah. yeah, It could be. But I get this feeling, and I, I'm going to just say what's in my head, what's in my heart. Uh, you enjoy beating yourself up in some way. Yeah. I, uh, there's two people in here. I, maybe no, more than two. I, I, I don't think that's uh, okay. <laughs> that, and that you, don't, and it, you sort of don't get to do that. What do you mean? You screw it up, and uh, yeah. It's on you, but you don't get to beat yourself up for it because that's not, it's not making it better. That's not helping anybody. It's not no. doing anything yeah. it's for anybody, I'm just including yourself. You, we're talking about it, so I'm, I'm being honest. I understand you are. You know, I'm, like, I'm, I don't I wanna, do this wanna, all day. A part of me does, and I fight it. I'm good. fighting it. I want you to reframe that because you know? I don't think you sort of... I'm still working my ass off. Good. I'm putting in as much effort as I can. Good. You know, I'm really trying to make it in the comedy world, and I'm... Trying to make the podcast work. I put my heart into it. You know, I, interv I interviewed somebody yesterday, and I was like, "You, you know, you, you did a really good job. You know, you should be proud of yourself." Yeah. And who who is the beating up for? Who be, who's the, who's supposed to feel better by you beating yourself up? You? No. Katie? It's just this tough. It's my father. It's oh, this, see, that's what I was worried it's about. This negative coach. Yeah. It's always get up, your pussy. Well, get up your pussy is not not yeah, bad. It, it escalates from get up your pussy to you are a pussy. A pussy. Yeah. Well, so. it, se it seems to me, and I think it would seem to a lot of people who've been around you a lot, Jason, that there's very often one of your flaws is uh, an ability to only see things in black and white, mm. and so in that manifests itself in this sort of situation as either you're looking at things and everything's coming up roses, and you're doing great. At everything, or it's all bad. there's a couple of problems. I'm the worst person ever. And yeah, it's, it's, it's and it's the it, and I'm the worst person is okay. It's a thought, but then to beat the crap out of yourself for it, that that seems not right. That seems excessive in some way. I don't know what you're what you're up to with that. Is that your addict self doing that to Probably. justify using, or is it, is it to make her feel better? I, it just feels then not that I'm. Not, I, I just want to explore it because I think we can get you. A little above it, a little bit. I'm not judging you for it. I'm just yeah. saying it feels something's excessive. It's just been a, a man. I know people have go through so much more than I than I have. So now you're gonna beat yourself up a, for that. It's just been a. It's just like every time I try to do something, it it's failed lately. And I think that maybe there was a time there where it was going the complete opposite, and I'm scared. Well, I got that. That's that's real. That's real. <laughs> I get that. Is that worse than beating yourself up, being scared? No. Okay. Be scared. Yeah. Well, I am. I have mm. been. I've been terrified for a couple of years now. Mm. I just keep hustling because I know I'll I'll make it if I keep hustling. Okay. It's just uncomfortable in the meantime. Yeah. Yeah, and it, you know, it's a lot of. You know, I feel bad. You know, like the show isn't doing that good, so I don't have enough money to pay for everybody. So I let go of Kevin, and everybody hates me for that. But but nobody's you know, podcasting stuff was all down. Just everybody. Yeah, it's been down for a while. Yeah, but it, I don't. It was that will turn. That will turn like everything. Oh, I'm really trying. It will. It will improve. I don't plan on just giving up. Katie's sucking on her drink. <laughs> Sorry. Are you okay? Me? Yeah. Not really. No, oh, I'd imagine. Yeah, not really. You know what I'm talking about with him beating himself up? Yeah. 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 Even when I would try to give him, like, um, not critiques, but just things that I was, like, asking for in the relationship, he would take that as, oh, so I'm not good. 
I'm all shit. Yeah. He would always, it's very hard on himself. Mm hmm. You know, it's tough. I mean, I just feel like the world, it's like the world that Jason and I come from are two very, very different worlds. What? And yet, you're not a skateboarder? And yet, <laughs> well, I mean, just going, the, the, my family couldn't be more different from yours. Yes, We're of from course. Literal opposite sides Ooh, of the I, world. I, but the, um, one of the things that I understand, and I hate to put it all on, you know, on Christianity, but that the the lack of emotional intelligence in the world that we came from and the way that that manifests is when there's like a little thing that somebody wants to talk to you about, everybody's just made of porcelain. Uh, and, and you just learn, I, I shouldn't bring up things. No, that, that's not that good. That bother me a little bit. That's because, not good. Because they're going to freak out and it's actually easier for me to just try to no, work. No, wow. people, are, people are generally yeah. afraid of important topics. It's just <laughs> easy. That, you're not alone that way. It's no, I know, are. but I, I think like I, I know uh, that my wife and I are better at that than my parents were. And I'd say her, yeah, you know, her family is. And I think that's literally just a generational thing. Jason is better at that than his parents were. And his parents maybe have been better at it than their parents were. But we all, uh, we, we learned that this is the way that you interact is... Is is avoiding. If, if somebody tells you something bad, you have this irrational flip out, and either that that manifests as you yelling at everybody and breaking stuff, or you just go home and sulk about how bad you are or how much they suck because they don't get all the things that you do for them and blah 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 blah. But it, it's it's <sighs> we're very 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 bad at talking about uncomfortable subjects in a nuanced way. Everybody that we, is that we can actually address and try to fix. Yeah, yeah. you know. Yeah. It's it's even if you can't fix it, just genuinely support somebody. Right. You know, see, see, I see you. I see mm. you. I see what you're going through. I feel it. I'm here. Yeah, yeah. I don't want to let anybody in. Yeah. But I, you know, there are sort of things you the things you got to take care of before you can take care of other things, and I'm worried that the substance and the sex has gotten to that point. That's all, and you have to kind of think about that. What you do with it is your deal. But it's yeah. pretty hard to, all the shame and stuff you're feeling, is really, we're talking about shame here. This is all shame. And shame is hard to manage if you're still medicating. Hmm. I know it feels better at the moment when you medicate and then it gets worse on the other side. Yeah. Hmm. Yeah, you're probably right. Uh, wish I wasn't. Again, yeah, I no, wish you could just take <laughs> take that stuff and be good and yeah. <laughs> make you better. It's, that's that. It doesn't really work like that. You've been doing this for a minute. Yeah, a minute or two. I've seen some of this. De I've dealt with my own family now. My kid, you know, people in my family have had it, and and uh, it's I've seen it all this from so many different perspectives now. It's like, phew. this is the you know, it's being a human being, which kind of sucks. Mm. Mm. It's also pretty cool. Can be. Yep. I think it's. Um, I think you're right. I think it's just come to the point where, got to try something else. Well, it's as easy as just these days. It's just <laughs> when we finish here today, you can open your computer and do a Zoom meeting, and they'll, you don't even turn your camera on. Just yeah. go to attend a meeting. I just don't know if I can stop. All right. I don't know if. Yeah. Who yeah. are the three? people inside you what do you mean i don't know you said you had i said a couple people yeah well something. there's somebody that's always you know and i get caught or i think i think it's me but it's this other person that's always bashing me yeah. always bringing up the mistakes how you could be better how someone else is better and that's not jason i don't think so i mean it is it's a part of me but yeah. i feel you know like I don't think I'm a bad person. I think I I, I want everybody let, to be happy. Let me happy. Just take, take a quick poll. Anybody here think Jason's a bad person? Anybody? Bad person? No question. Katie? No. Bad. Okay. 100%, not bad person. I just... I don't... I don't know if I have... the tools to see it another way. I just... I don't know. I've, I feel like I'm in shock. I'm just doing... Shock that you're here again. Yeah, and I'm just... Uh, I'm on autopilot. Just making it, hoping for a, a better day. 
There will be a better day for sure. Even if you keep doing drugs, there'll be better days. <laughs> there just will be. You think? Yeah, yeah. I think you're making it less likely, and it's. I mean, yeah. it really. I don't want to. Like I said, a lot of, everyone's got a tough life, but it really has been quite a thing lately. Yeah, I've seen a lot of bad stuff in my life, but in the last year, it's pretty gnarly. Like if I wrote them down, I don't think you know. It's a lot. It's like. As much as you can, I mean, I'm, I'm, unless I start having a heart problem again, it can't get any worse. You know, everybody's, my friends are passing away and getting divorced. I'm, show's not what it was and it's just back down to shit kicker again. And I'm like, man, I worked so hard to get up here. I know that's not. A good way to look at it, but it's, what does that mean, shit kicker? It's nothing. You're nothing again. Well, I don't think anybody feels that way. Right? I don't I care what I they think. I understand Obviously. you feel that way. I get it, but I don't think that's and accurate. It kills me. You know, hmm. I'm better than that. Hmm. <clears throat> hmm. Well, I don't think anybody. You know, I definitely reject the line of thinking that. And again, this comes from the way I was raised, that because somebody has it worse than you, you don't have a right to feel bad about your problems. That, that's his shame and his beating himself up and stuff again. Same thing. But once again, this is something that I, there was some kind of weird emotional language of the way that our people, like ultimately Jason and me are both like Scottish Irish. Mm. And I swear to God, it all goes back to them that I, it's bad that I'm, feeling bad because I don't have a right to feel bad because look at that guy living in a tent. And it's like, yeah, no. That's, that's a Scottish thing. That can suck. They, you know what? They can have a bigger problem than you and it can still suck to be you right yeah. now. Those yeah. things are not mutually exclusive. Yeah. But I reflexively do the same thing. And you're making a lot of sense. I feel like I fight with that opinion of myself. You know, even with the gay stuff, like I, I, that's who I am. But a part of me hates me for it. Yeah, this disintegration that you're talking about. Like you're not a whole, you're not, you're, you can always have parts of yourself, but they're all together. Yeah. They integrate together and they, they, they work together. I feel like you have different parts and they're not, they're not communicating with each other. They're just sort of attacking and, yeah. you know. Yeah, it does. It feels it's not, confusing. They're not regulated together. Let's put it that way at least. Yeah. And, it, and, and I'm an odd fellow too. I don't have a lot of, um, that, a lot in common with, with many people, but, because of the, the lifestyle that I live. But the 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 what you're calling odd is also, people enjoy the, the difference. We, oh, people some enjoy, people do, yeah. People enjoy different. Okay. I, one of the things that <laughs> really one of the things that bugs me that you deal with is you you had told me once recently that that the, you're being judged for the gay stuff, that that is like so unfair. That drives me crazy. I just we shouldn't. No one should give one s about that. Um, I mean, Katie might have some feeling about it. That's different. That's in, in the intimate relationship with you, but the world should have. <laughs> yeah, it just I might be more in my head than the world. Oh, well, that's interesting. You know, I get it because I, you know, I, if I add up all that. the positive to all the negative. Like the positive is bigger for sure. Oh, so the, but, well, the negative is what we notice always. Yeah, right? so it just seems to me like I live in a country where it'd be better if I wasn't me. And I just went back to, you know, I can't help thinking that there was a time there where I wasn't open about it and everybody liked the show. Oh, I see. And now... You're just doing the math. Yeah, because I don't really know the answer, mm. you know. Well, there's something there, and this is just like a, a piece of the puzzle, but this would speak to what I was saying earlier, your sometimes inability to see subtlety in things. I think that there are some people who hate gay people and they're like, oh, that guy's gay, then I'm out on this show. Yeah. I think that that's a very small number of people. I would think, I Relative would hope to, so. I have more faith in this country than that. For sure. And you guys have, you have, you have a lot of Canadian you know, fans and stuff. Still, it seems right? like, like I yeah. did your show and everybody loved me for it. Yes. But if I do it on here... They don't. Well, I think the difference there. I, I just, I'm just being honest. No, it's just, I, I feel I'm like I've at, never had more pe more positive 
feedback from being on a show ever than we did than after your dark. show the other day. Yes. yes. I think you did a dark. great job. It was admirable. It was crazy. Yeah. See, see, I think I'm I can, not surprised. I, I think I can explain that if I, if I just finish. I and, think if, and by the way, that's a harsh world over there too, by yeah. the way. Right. But go ahead. But if people don't have a history with Jason then and they get him through your show and they're more familiar with you, then I think they can see, oh, this is a really interesting person. I can't think of another oh. person in the culture who has this sort of combination of traits. What I was saying is, for every one guy who, and listenership of every show evolves and changes and goes up and down. For every one guy who's like, if he's gay, I'm out. I don't look gay. Uh. There's five, maybe more guys who go, the person I started listening to had a life that was similar to mine that I yeah. could relate to. I wish you the best, but I can't, what you're into is not something I'm into anymore. And that person doesn't hate you. Yeah. So maybe talk about it less. <laughs> so maybe I have so, been. Yeah. Because because they so what what Tully's saying is that they need you to be something different. Yeah. yeah it's, all right. And I've been through that, that, that with. That, doesn't mean you can't have this also, but they would like you to be something a little different. Sure. Mm -hmm. And it, yeah. and if it wasn't that, it might be something else. There's been shows oh, I listen to, particularly something like a podcast or a radio show where you really do have an intimate relationship, yeah. and it's not your imagination. You really do know that person. Yeah. There's a show I listen to, and it's gotten more popular. I feel like the guy's starting to get a little cocky in a way that he did, used to be very self-effacing. Oh. And I'm like, oh, this is a Ugh. little, it's a little yeah. less fun for me. He can't help it. He was do you nobody. Take calls? Do you two calls to the show? Uh, yeah. People can. And do you ever do you have, talk about this kind of stuff? See what's going on? See what people need from you, want from you? Uh, I feel like most of the, there's like a tight community that love me. And you, are, your and your are, fans and are, are uh, I, I've experienced them at Ellis Mania. They're I, I can't believe we can't use the F word here. It's just, it doesn't feel natural. We already have like you. five times. Yeah. Yeah. No, we're putting worth. this episode on yeah. Pornhub. How about it? <laughs> but I, they are so, first of all, they're wonderful. But secondly, they're so appreciative of you yeah. and what the world you created and stuff. They really appreciate it. Yeah, I appreciate them too. Maybe it's never a, and Ellis far. Mania got canceled too, right? And that was yeah. BS. Yeah, Maybe that's dude. what you need. Maybe you need another Ellis Mania to kind of bring you, get you... Yeah, but I've, I've worked on that for two years. I understand. And it's it, horrific. And it just, I can't believe it. I called you when, yeah, I, when I heard I it. I was like so pissed. The amount of things that fell through to still be like, we have a really good event coming up. Yeah. And then just boom. What Did somebody sabotage you yeah, or something? Yeah, somebody called. And what is it you're doing that you're not supposed to do? Um, well, I don't, I guess. Do we even know? Somebody got killed in an exhibition fight in Vegas. And now they're looking for people, but that's one part of it. But the other part is somebody called the athletic commission no, directly I that part. and said, Jason Ellis Ugh. needs a license. And then I see like yesterday or two days ago, fight circus where they have my fights. They have musical chair. They have, sorry, they have the human pinata fight. And, the, and I'm like, wait, that's, that's yours. my... Uh, yeah, but it's yeah. I, don't, I invented that fight. <laughs> it's Katie's. I yeah. meant, but I meant. you did. Just yeah, that w the human pinata fight was my idea. I was proud of that. All right. Well, I'm pissed with you. You should talk to Rampage about that because he stole it. <laughs> so how do they get away with that and you don't? They're in Thailand. Oh, so they just did a pay per view in Thailand. Uh. So you know, the, what now, would it take now, to get a license in, in Vegas? Well, now we're trying to get a license because Lewis wants me to do Ellis Mania at Skankfest. And you guys now, are talking again? Yeah, we're cool. Huh? Yeah. yeah. See? Well, I told you that did not make sense to me. Yeah, you're right. Yeah. Yeah. So good. Yeah. Yeah, Jay Oakerson and all those guys were all good. So it's very cool because I really do like those guys. And that one was a, you know, that was, that's, a, you know, a show, like, and then we got a fight. And then, you know, he couldn't make it. So then the Hard Rock canceled. And then the Hard Rock turned the Virgin. They're like, sorry, we don't want to do it anymore. Uh -huh. And then COVID came and I couldn't get a place to, do it. Oh, it sucks. And then I finally got a place, and it just seemed like I was doing it by myself. And no, I love you guys getting together. It's perfect. There was a lot of holes, and then somebody helped me fix it, and then right when it was all ready to go, uh, like Tony was going to fly to Vegas just to sing a song. Of course. Like, it was That's a, the kind of friends you have, no doubt in my it mind. It was going right? to be really cool. Yeah. Yeah, so if I get a he license. He sing a duet. He likes singing. I, I do too. They, oh, wow. Just, <laughs> that is a great idea. Back to back. You guys should do <laughs> Bohemian Rhapsody together. Yeah. <laughs> uh, be yeah. a different key then. Scatamoosh, scatamoosh. <laughs> yeah. Oh, I would. Yep. That's big money to see that. <laughs> hey, everybody. Jason Ellis, Jason Ellis Show, uh, bringing you AG1. 
do us a favor and use our promo code and do your body a favor and put this in some water and drink it. We're talking about comprehensive and convenient daily nutrition. You know all those words. Here's another word you might not know, bioavailability. When you're talking about AG1, you are talking about putting a whole bunch of things in your body and then imagine this, keeping them there. You ever do that thing where you get a supplement, maybe it costs a lot of money, and then you pee an hour or a couple hours later and it's like a color your pee has never been before? That was all the expensive stuff that you drank or you took in a pill going right back out into the toilet. It's probably not good for the dolphins. It's definitely not doing you any good. This is bioavailable stuff that your body actually absorbs and keeps. What good is all this stuff on the back if it doesn't stay in your body? Your body needs it and AG1 delivers it. it. Says it's good for your skin and your hair and your nails. That's crazy. That explains why I look so terrific today. If you're looking for an easier way to take supplements, Athletic Greens is giving you one year free supply of vitamin D and five free travel packs with your first purchase. Go to athleticgreens.com slash J-E-S. That's athleticgreens.com slash J-E-S. Thank you, AG1. But this is you. What is this part of you that's creative and excited and yeah. wants to bring bring people together and stuff? And it's the it's the fan appreciation that gets you going. And it's they just so do many appreciate slaps you. that you get over the nose where you're like, maybe if, I shouldn't do it anymore. Mm, you know, please do it. Like, it feels like the universe is the telling coming me up in give August. Up. Is, is it for that one? Yeah. No. No. Wait, August. Is it come up? It's in next August? year. I thought it was. End of, end of September, beginning yeah. of October. Oh, that the one you want to add to, be a part of? Yeah, I'm, I've been a part of the last two. Let's do and it. And it was really cool. But now, if we do it, especially in Vegas, there needs to be a license, which means that it's going to cost Skankfest more money. People that fight are going to need to be tested before they fight. For what? Drugs? The, no, yes. And to make sure that they don't have any illnesses. So like COVID testing or something? No, like you have, like a, they want to test people's brains and stuff, like make sure they don't have any damage so that, you, that if they get hit, they don't die. How do you, if you have any cardiovascular problems. So what are they, what are they? They're they going to roll an MRI down. They blood, I was say they want an MRI no, they blood of, test you all. Well, blood testing is uh, whatever. I'm just telling you the lies. Yeah. Now they're going to bring the heat. And they, I, I don't think that all the fights that I've had will ever happen again because of the... God, I used to know the physician. The commission will just go, wait, you can't have, you know, you can't fight Shane Carwin. You just can't. You can't. Yeah. I don't think you should. I agree, but <laughs> so- I'm just, and I was bringing that fight up. As, it, there was a few fights that have happened where they'd be like, look, we can, you can give us all the blood tests you want. I'm not letting you do that fight. They were good. very stupid. That's good. Yeah. But it does make you'll, it. You'll it does it make to, it different. You'll push it till you that's really true, hurt yourself. That's not true, Drew. That's not true. Okay, I've retired before the Alice Maney got canceled. Yeah. So I'm not. You're taking, gonna put yourself out there. I'm not take. I'm taking. I'll. I'll like take little shots, but I'm not fighting. A, okay. A real okay. fighter again. Good. Okay. Good. So I was Is more that, about just making a funny event. I, I get it. And I definitely don't. More so now than in the start of Alice Mania. I've definitely become more con- like concerned about health and welfare of everybody in there. If you get hit, and I look and I think that you got a little bit of a concussion, yeah, it's over. Yeah, and before I would let it go. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So yeah. there's Good. definitely this is this all improvement? Yeah, yep. I'm not gonna. By the way, add to the longevity of this whole thing. We are in the middle of trying to get a license, so it ain't I love over. it. Yeah. Keep it going. Apparently, I have to go to Vegas and have a meeting with the board. Who I used to know the guy that was the pretty uh, crazy. medical director, Tony something. I can't remember his name. I, I, I don't know. You want to reach out? <laughs> I, I would. I would yeah. on your behalf if I if I could do something. Yeah. Well, I, I, that might be a big help. Well, let me if he's still I think there, we need I, all the help we can get because right. it seems like somebody put us on the shit list, and that's that's the end of that. Unless we do Alice Mania in Thailand, then yeah, all bets are off. Yeah, that seems. Expensive. I think I can swing a license there. Yeah. Uh, uh, yeah, I don't know if Butterballs has time off work to get to <laughs> Thailand. But. Yeah, it'd be hard to get the crowd there. Yeah, right. It, 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 as much as they appreciate you, the, the the group you would get would be very interesting. I'm yeah. sure of that. I got a lot of Friendster friends there. <laughs> <laughs> it would be funny to just bring 30 people to 
Thailand, mm-hmm. do Alice Mania in front of people that don't care, don't, <laughs> right. no yeah. one's even really watching, <laughs> no. but it's on pay-per-view for everybody here to watch. Yeah, it's like Karate Kid too, just in yeah. front of a village. We could just travel to all the countries that let you have <laughs> sure. fights without licenses and then, then I'll just make a team. Our new do- job is we travel the world beating each other up in ridiculous <laughs> ways for pay-per-view. <laughs> the, the last one I was at at the Hard Rock was a big crowd. How Do you get more on the pay-per-view? Uh, more oh, than the show up? Yeah, if it wow. happens, yeah. That's great. Yeah, we we're never very good at doing the pay-per-view. But I know promoting it or, or executing it? Executing it. We had one time in Texas, we had uh, uh, an executive producer who was, I don't even, I can't even, I, 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 I felt like somebody hired this person to finish the show off because it was that insane of what a, uh, a mistake this person was like, it was out of control. Yeah. And it was like, I was hiring a team to do the pay per view. And this person was like, I've got a friend that does all that. We could do it for half the cost. Uh-oh. And then just, <laughs> just <laughs> pooped on it. And it just didn't happen. We had a couple of legendary hires. Legendary. <laughs> serious thing. Yeah. One of them just uh, was like, I'm dying. So I can't work on the show anymore. Was that true? No. Probably not. No, nope, not at all. Still, still not sure I can legally comment. Pretty, pretty sure that they're working in alive today, but anyway. Yeah. Stay away from those people. But they just didn't come in and they had the job. Yeah. For months, right? Uh, yeah, that was. And then every part- now and then they would come in out of the blue and walk around, maybe try to give someone Botox or something. And sh- they couldn't answer the phones, they couldn't run the board. They didn't know how to organize us. They weren't organized. And they were faking a death the end, most of the That's day. the wild part. Yeah. And, and I think everybody kind of knew. Oh, I because I think at one point the guy that was our producer <coughs> who left to be in charge of the whole channel without, like that was, he just stepping stoned us. And then I think he hired this person that, because I ended up knowing, he knew that, that apparently they, uh, got another job while they were working as us, with us. But people like that should be beating themselves up. Yeah. Yeah, but they're not for sure. Yeah. It's insane. No, yeah. They, I've kind of learned that the hard way, right? The people who are capable of doing insane things, it yeah. goes hand in hand with lacking the self-consciousness to ever. To feel ever, bad about to it. To ever, even like, they're not even on their deathbed, you be like, oh, wait. I was a complete dick. Oh. It's not going to happen. They're just going to ride off into the sunset thinking that everybody was wrong and they were right. It might be a good thing in a roundabout way. Sure. Because I feel mm. like, like you were saying with the person that you liked on that show and they got a little egotistical. I definitely did that. I definitely was, you know, the skateboard guy that came to LA to try and make a show, be like Howard Stern. And then, it, you know, it started to happen and people started paying me a, a lot of money and, giving me free things and what, you know, like, you want a record deal, Jason? Like, it got pretty crazy. Like, it was, I had a TV show about the, about Alice Mania. It was on TV. And now I can't, now it's illegal. Anyway, but I, and I think I got up in the clouds and I, and, and then I checked myself. It, it I, feels I feel like, like I checked myself and I ruined myself. Like, I, I was like, stop being such an egotistical dick and, you suck for the way you treat people. And then I think I went like the opposite and became insecure and no longer the leader and more just like, I don't want to get, I don't want to bum anybody out. So, you know, maybe, you know, if you, if someone disagrees, just, just go with it. There is a better play, a balanced place to be, right? That's, yeah, the, but I'm that's out, the black and white thing again. Yeah. I'm out here by myself. I've always been by myself. Mm. I don't have any wise people to let. I mean, you. I don't want to, hey, Drew, what should I do about this? Hey, Drew, what should I do about that? Like, I got to make up my own decisions. Once again, decisions. There's, there's, a, there's a middle zone between never calling and yeah. calling once in a while to ask for some support. Yeah, you know, yeah good point. I, I'm the one that calls you when I get, start getting worried. Yeah, I know. Right? Yeah. I, that's only when I hear stuff and I go, oh, Drew's got to call to make sure he's okay. Yeah. Yeah. Ugh. Well, I am going to be. I, am. I agree. All you got to do is keep moving forward. The same guy that did that show is, is you. And this this feels like, fluctu- you know, sort of market forces. You know what I mean? That things are fluctuating, but they don't feel like they're 
changed in some sub meaningful way. And yeah. and and you're so freaking creative, you'll create something else because of this this situation. Yeah. Provided you give yourself a, a, a second of, of a break, give yourself a little break. Yeah, yeah. I don't know how to do that. <laughs> give myself a break. You mean like take time off? No, just stop beating yourself up. Yeah, just, just for a little bit. Yeah, it's a battle, man. Katie, what I, are you thinking? Uh, I feel you. I feel you out there thinking. <laughs> you know what yeah, I mean? Do you have the answers, Katie? What are you thinking? Oh boy! I, can, I literally feel it through the wall, right? <laughs> yeah, I. There's a lot. There's a lot. I know. Around what, in there. So, what are you thinking Ab about everything we're talking about out here? I mean, I would love to see Jason um, implement these these things that you're suggesting. You know, don't Which? be don't I, be don't be so hard on yourself. Yeah, I'm being very. I'm being a little vague, right? I'm yeah. not. I'm not because I'm his friend first, and I'm yeah. not his doctor. And, and taking time, you know. I've even said it. Like, why don't you s take a day where you don't answer anything that pertains to work? Don't have any work conversation. Don't have anything related to You still to have fun doing this, though. You still like work. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, he, he likes it too much. But he, ha he also has this thing where he has to answer every message, no matter who it comes from. And I feel like... Like text message or email or all? DMs. All. Oh, no, you no. Know, yeah, you don't have to do that. Comments. You don't owe anybody anything. It'll keep him up at night. Mm. It's not healthy. I, I get it, but you don't, you don't owe anybody that. No. I don't? See? Mm -mm. They made this. I, you, but you don't owe anybody anything. You don't owe them stuff. People are, and especially if it's on social media, people are assholes. You know, people just are doing it just to make trouble sometimes. I and mean, if you want to answer, great, but you don't owe people answers. Yeah, they know that. They understand that. And if they get you, if they get you, their, claw, their hooks in you, sometimes they'll sort of take advantage of that a little bit. Or who knows what their intention are in, in reaching out to you? You've got sounds like you have people that sort of have bad intentions sometimes. Mm hmm. Hmm. Yeah, nobody. Especially when you're fragile right now. I mean, why, why put yourself through that? Just. Because I'm trying to be considerate to the people that are asking for stuff so that they keep listening. What kind of stuff do they ask for? Well, sometimes it's, you know, where do you get, well, I want to get my kid a skateboard and I'll tell So them. why don't you do like a... But then sometimes it's not that. Why don't you just do an Instagram live or something? Just do something where you can sort of, hey, I, I can't answer all these DMs. It stresses me out. Yeah. Katie asked me not to do it. I'll do an Instagram live. Come, come ask me questions. Yeah. You or, do that, huh? Yeah. Yeah. And you have like a planned time to do it and stuff. No, so it'll just, no, I'll, I'll just, just do it. And yeah. uh, TikTok tends to be, do you guys have, you have a TikTok presence? Yeah, but I never gone live on it. You can go live on there. They, that Instagram is a much kinder environment. They're really appreciative and kinder. Are they? More than, more yeah. than Twitter. Which is yeah, a disaster. Oh, no, I've seen your Twitter. Yeah. <laughs> and, and TikTok can be rough, can be a little rough, but, yeah. but it's better than Twitter. It's sort of in between. Uh, that's been my experience. Anyway. To what do you attribute that? I have no idea. It may, huh. it may just be my stuff, you know. Yeah. I, but I definitely see it. I, people, you go on Instagram and they immediately start with, "Oh, thank you, thank you, thank you." A lot of thank yous and stuff huh. and gratitude. I'm like, "Yeah, I'm ready. What, what, what have you got? I can take it now." TikTok, they, they'll start with, uh, you know, "Why didn't you? Why are you?" Huh. And Twitter, yeah. it's just, "You are a star." <laughs> Wait, you're really selling the TikTok live? No, well, but but you but it, it could be good. I mean, you, well, the, yeah. the numbers are bigger. Typically in TikTok, because okay. a lot of people are on TikTok. So, uh, yeah, I guess I'll check it out. Do just, both. Do one than the other. Yeah. And one, if you don't like it, one's going. Yeah, I don't post that much on TikTok. I more just watch it for all the videos they have. Yeah, it's, I I like TikTok. I I, yeah. I learn stuff on TikTok. You post stuff on there too, though, right? Yeah, we've started to. Yeah. I, I was doing it for a while, then I stopped. I'm starting to again. I think that's kind of how I did it. Yeah, it's it's hard. You got to keep the stuff going. Yeah. It's, uh, yeah, and it's always confusing to what people like. Because uh, it's yeah. like one minute that one does good and then the next one's it's very impossible. similar and it, cannot, it doesn't. You cannot I'm like, it what? I know. <laughs> I, know. I know. And then something you post where you're like, that's the dumbest thing ever and everyone loves that. I'm like, ah. Do you, do you express your love and gratitude for your audience? Yeah. Regularly? I mean, I'm driving to Vegas this weekend because there's people that, were, that had... Uh, like plane tickets and hotel rooms to see Alice Mania. So I 
got my manager to find a club for me to do comedy on Saturday night. It's amazing. So I'm driving to Vegas to do comedy to hang out with the people that didn't get, a, they couldn't get refunds on their That is amazing. Planes it and speaks hotel. volumes about how much you appreciate your listeners. Can you get a command performance from Katie? People need to see that talent. She's not coming. Katie, dude, you got to get up there on that stage. I swear to God. She doesn't want to go in a car. If anybody did see Vegas. Katie, Katie has raw talent. <laughs> Timing. Yeah, I remember when she did it, I was like. You, well, you she, and I both. We didn't even talk to each other. She had a joke that helped me with my jokes. <laughs> and I was like, man, we should go on the road. <laughs> well, you we, help. We remember help I each came other. backstage and I was like, did you see, did you see what I saw? Yeah. You're like, oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. I was. I, I I watch Kill Tony. I, I listen to Kill Tony every Monday, and when you come to Austin, let's do it. I did. I bombed so hard. You went. You went to Austin. I when I did your show. Oh, you did it. I did I'm your mum's house with Tony. Then I flew to Utah for Ken's funeral, Ugh. and I didn't sleep. And then I came back, and I was having like a panic attack because I couldn't sleep. And then I was on the Secret Show. And I bombed oh, it's easy. really it's, it's hard. hard to do that. Shows. And then I did your show, and I was like, "Well, at least I did good on your show." But yeah, yeah I don't know about Kill Tony having me on. They'd oh. be like, "Yeah, we saw you. We're good." <laughs> it was really bad. I was like, "Of all the places, too, Jason." Oh but, my god, you you did you go up as as a as a did you on the panel or did you go? No, up? no, I wasn't on, on Kill Tony. You'd be good on just, the panel. Yeah. Oh my. Sorry. <laughs> it just doesn't, have, it's a comedy show with comedians. You, know? you, you do stand up. Yes, but I, I'm just some turd. That, they, they were going to put me on that panel at one point. Yeah, but you're Dr. Drew. But I'm not a comedian. Yeah, but you've been in comedy you for have 40 two. years. You've been in radio. I mean, yeah, that's not comedy, on. it's radio. Yeah. Uh, you've done it too. I, I don't, I'm just telling you what I think. All right. Right. Uh, he thinks he doesn't deserve things. I know. I'm hearing it. That's what I'm addressing. Yeah. You got to pay your dues. You're paying them. Oh, yeah. No, I'm almost a proper up-and-coming comedian now. There's no more, like, easy street. It's mm. just you're a turd. You got to <laughs> figure out how to get people to like it. You're a proper comedian now. Yeah, because you know, <laughs> a lot of them are like, man, I slept in my car last night, and I'm, you know, and I was... I'm like I, I, I did. I did shows. I went on the road where I paid for myself to go on the road just to do the show. Oh yeah, that's comics proper. can't do that. But now I can't afford to do that. Mm. So now it's more. I'm like a comic. Mm -hmm. You know, they're like, "Hey man, come to Vegas." I'm like, "Are you flying me? Because if you're not, I can't afford it." Yeah, yeah. But it, there was a time there where I flew there and had a hotel room to do a show for 15 minutes. You know, at a, at a club that nobody cared because I was like, I'm getting spots. You know, yeah. no one else will do that. Yeah. But now it's more normal. But I am getting better at that. Good. Yeah, I feel like it might even help. Help. I feel like that's the one time where I get to like really switch off from the worries of everything and just use that stuff too because be comedy, me. you know, good comedy comes from that stuff. Yeah, I think it's working. Yeah. There's less, I care less about what you're going to do. Like, I think I was so nervous at first with the crowd. And now I'm like, if you don't like me, I don't, I, you know, I don't care. And is it your fans mostly showing up or is it? No, nah, they don't show up at all. Assholes. To, to your comedy act? <laughs> I mean, sometimes they do. I they, feel like LA is always, my experience doing stand up myself is that if some, a fan came, it was always like, I'm on a business trip from Alberta. Yeah. yeah. When I went out to whatever that was in Ontario, there were a bunch of fans there. That was a he that was me headlining. So uh, yeah, that was different. okay. Yeah, got it. But it's not a. It's not like, and this, it's not like you know, Andrew Santino does a show, and it's a six hundred seater. It's six hundred seats sold. I know it's weird. I'm not a comedian yet. I'm Jason Ellis yeah. from the Jason well, Ellis Show. Yeah. So when I do it, it's it's not. But everyone has the to get to the theater time. thing. Yeah, it takes yeah. a while. Yeah. Yeah. So that's. I like it that way. I think it'd be weird if, because I'm successful in podcasting or because I was a pro skateboarder, I just sell out, you know, like a TikToker right. who's now a comedian and he's not very funny. He or she's not that funny, but they sell out the room. So to then do that they now? To, that happens? That's what I've heard, yeah. To do what? Oh, my goodness. What I, do they I, do? I, knew, I, knew a, I knew a guy who was <laughs> tour managing for YouTube people who like, 
played checkers or Othello against each other. And, and they could what do they do in the room, in the theater? They would play Othello and project it on a screen and 1,200 kids would come and scream for them. Oh it's my such gosh, a so crazy such a, that's a weird world. world. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, but if you're selling but that's the, the room, future. Yeah, this is this is how Frank Sinatra felt the first time he saw guys with long hair playing loud guitars. Yes. Yeah, I just yes. I just don't get it. Yes. Yep. this is not for me. Yeah, but it, you know, a, a comedy is comedy. Yes, and if you're a TikToker and you're doing a TikTok show, then that's not comedy. R right, yeah. but we're just talking about selling out a theater yeah. and how that how that works now. Well, I know a lot of the clubs are feeling the the burn of that. Is if the first time anybody ever went to the local comedy hut was to see somebody that they really like, and then that person didn't deliver live. Yeah, that person doesn't just come away thinking that TikToker isn't as funny as I thought they were. They come away thinking, I don't know if wow. I'll go see live comedy because yeah. it's not as good as I thought it would wow. be. So a club has to, a, a club is, they're, they're taking the short money, yeah. per, perhaps at the expense of the long money, of wow. alienating long-term comedy I kind of feel like fans. if there was somebody to solve, you're good at creating and integrating, <clears throat> solve this, use this, figure this out. I'm sorry, what I, do you mean? You know, this whole new world of, TikTok performers and whatever it is that brings people want to see and brings them together. That's you don't kind think of I'm a little too do. old for social media. <clears throat> social media is kind of a young person's game, though. Don't you think? Yeah, it is, but it doesn't mean you can't do it. Yeah, I mean, I'm on there, so I, I, I don't. But I, I mean, I, you could. I feel like you could figure out, like, why are they going to see these people, and what does that do for them, and how can I make it actually entertaining? You know how? Yeah, well, I, see, I feel like I've done my research, and it, and I've discovered that you're full of shit and you're not entertaining. It's just this weird edit of like wackiness and everyone's a uh, nickelback clown and they like it. And I don't mm. want to be that. I don't, I'd rather be broke. Yeah, you shouldn't be that, but maybe you, can, shit. maybe you can bring them in to participate with you in some way. It's like Jim Norton. Yeah. So funny. Yeah. But Jim Norton's a classic comedian. He's older. Yeah. Like if he's just like, I'm a TikTok guy now and I edit you know, fast You're stuff. missing my point. I'm saying you you bring people together. Yeah. Maybe you can find these people that are whatever it is they're doing, figure out what it is that people like and, and bring them into your world. Dress them as pinatas and beat them well, up. It, something. And I would watch that. I, I would too. Yep. Right? So I'm just saying. Yeah. We'll figure it out. Yes, you will. Yeah. I like it. Go ahead, Michael. Yeah, no, speaking of answering too many direct messages, we have a direct message we need to answer <laughs> okay, right, that I want to get to. And Emily, and Emily sent this to you, Jason. Oh. Special request for Dr. Drew. Mm. He seems to assume that everyone... Mm, I assume everything. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> my love mind reading. I love when people are reading my mind. It's okay. always been your fatal flaw. Yeah, yeah. Uh, every, he seems to assume that everyone who identifies as asexual mm. just has a hormonal imbalance, ah. uh, which may be true for some, but I reckon there are just a fair amount of people who don't care about boning. You're always saying that, Drew. Yeah, well, she, she actually said it the way I actually say it. Yeah. She, she's, she actually articulated my opinion, yeah. which is what I always say. I say it a little bit backwards. I say, hey, before you identify as asexual, make sure that there isn't a hormonal problem because I've seen it a lot clinically. Mm -hmm. Well, there's some serious ass going down and we need to take care of that. Mm -hmm. And magic, when we treat the medical problem, they're now they're sexual again, huh. particularly males, particularly males. Uh, and, and then if, if we don't find anything and you're biologically cool, Go on your asexual way. Yeah. That good for you. There's but some very happy. Katie asexual. was laughing at that. <laughs> There's some very happy asexual people. Yeah, I feel I like listen. when you come to terms with especially it, these days, well, these days people like relationships are a hassle. I was gonna I say it'd be easier <laughs> existing. Yeah. I, I I I personally believe people need work, love, and play, and in love is sex. You know, and so I'm just saying. But if you find love other ways, good for you. I I don't judge, man. I do not judge. No, you don't. I, I want people that if, if they need help, I'll help. Yeah, because I have a lot of experience, a lot, a lot, a lot. Well, and above all else, you don't. Uh, one shouldn't judge <clears throat> happiness. There people have so many different ways of either being doomed to misery for one reason or another, or creating unnecessary misery. If you're doing something and it makes you happy, I just legit. And the older I get, I'm happy for you. You know, I don't know how many real furries there are. I think we talk about them more than they really exist. But if you're, a, if it really makes you that happy to be a badger, badge on, dude. And, and even if I'm, a, even I'm suspect that it's real happiness or you could be happier. If it's working for you, 
beautiful. Well, I can't judge her head. Beautiful. It's, it's, uh, exactly. Beautiful. If, it, if, you're, if it's a front and one day yeah. you're going to come crying and say, I was never happy as a badger, right. well, that's a different that's story. That's on you. But, it works for you in the meantime. Yeah. 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 If I judge some joy in there, I'm, I'm All right, we got to answer happy. all the DMs now. See <laughs> I mean, we answered Emily's. It wouldn't be fair to the other seven hundred people. Uh, who's who's out there now? What's the what's the sort of audience like for this part of the the program right now? Uh, I got a we got a phone, so I'm getting text messages. Okay. Um, love you, mate. Drew is a great friend. You're more relatable than you think. I have a heart condition too. I have to get. You know, speaking and, of the heart thing, I do you ever talk to Everlast about his? We, we've been talking a little yeah. bit. Yeah, his was much more serious. Yeah, he had a pacemaker put in. <laughs> Aortic valve replacement and a pacemaker. He has, yeah. a, he has a. You can hear if you if you're talking to him, even a little closer, and you stop talking and listening, you'll hear his valve click, 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 click. Oh wow! Yeah, he's doing good. Good. See. Um. Yeah, but anyway, people are very supportive. But that's it. That we got. You know, if you're on Patreon, you're still down. Hmm. And yeah, that's the thing. It's a little, I don't know if I'm using the phrase like self selecting. Yeah, no, they're self selecting. But, but hey, hey, do you self select? Where's the, where are the cameras here? I don't even know where they are. You want to? You, you self selecting folks, um, build, help Jason build it. Tell, tell, tell a friend. Mm -hmm. Tell it. No, I mean, because you know, you know how you love this, how, how intimate and cool this world is that he's created. Go tell a friend. Get them all in the, in the house. Yeah. Yeah. Go knock on some doors. Yeah, it, it would we'll be, be Jehovah, <laughs> we'll be the Jehovah Witnesses of podcasts. We'll be, no, no, just be a friend. Be a friend of the show. That's yeah. all. Yeah. Uh, before we cool. let you go, I was I'm curious to, to get your take on the the, on, all the, the, DMs. the ongoing and evolving Bam Margera situation. I, sure. I don't know what's going on. I, I've been very worried for him for years. So yeah. in short, there was a video probably about a week ago. He's in a restaurant, I think somewhere here in the in Valley. Burbank. And he's arguing with the, I don't know if it's his wife or the mother of his child, about custody kind of stuff yeah. that seems to be inebriated. The more mm. recent thing was him going through the list of grievances with the jackass people and saying he wanted to have a bare knuckle fight with Johnny Knoxville. Oh boy. Here's the question that I would pose for you. The, by the way, let me just say, I know for sure they only wish him the best. I agree. Yeah. I, 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 I think that's right. Yeah. I guess what I've been thinking about in regard to him is you obviously have a lot of experience with um, people who are not celebrities mm. that have issues and then a lot of issues with celebrity, mm -hmm. a lot of people, you have a lot of patients who are celebrities. Yep. If you're going into a room and all I tell you is this person, history of this, history of that, boom, have at it. If I tell you the exact same list of stuff and then I say, oh, and this guy was a big MTV star and movie star for 10 years, in the aggregate, how, how do you expect celebrity to, if at all, to complicate the issues of an, an I, addict? I don't, I don't even think about it. Okay. I, 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 if it were, you know, somebody like, somebody, if somebody had really legitimate sort of security and or massive celebrity, you know, it's Brad Pitt or something, mm -hmm. and even he has managed to kind of to get it, do some amazing work, I'm hearing. Um, he, he, you, you know, there's things where I have to accommodate that later, but in the short term, nothing. Because no, we no. assume that, that... That was the whole point of celebrity rehab. That was the whole point we were making, which is they're sick, they need help, and we treat them the way we treat everybody else. That's it, period. We, they're humans, patients, treatment. Mm -hmm. There are a couple things I learned through treating so many of them in, through, that, 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 through the years, which is n none of them, all of them present a version of themselves that's not their real self, which I was really kind of surprised at. But literally everybody I treated... Not everybody, but ninety percent had a. Their name wasn't even their name. You know, uh, they used some stage name. Yeah, and I thought, oh, geez, I do, <laughs> I do the same thing. I'm Dr. Pinsky, but I use the Dr. Drew because I wanted. At, when I started all this, I wanted people not to even know it was me. I just wanted to do this work, and I thought I was doing community service. Yeah, uh, but everyone has their own story with it. But because it's not their genuine self. It, they're sort of treated like cartoon cartoon characters, and they kind of create a cartoon character. And right. the, the first thing we do is to go, "What's what is your name? 
And right. I start calling them by their name. <laughs> when yeah, somebody calls their name from across the street, whether it's somebody goes, hey, Pinsky or yeah, Dr. Drew, yeah. you're a different person's going to turn around and address not, not, that. Not for me, thank God, but but I, but I for many of my patients, it's... Yeah. They, they, it cuts through the bullshit when you when you call them by their real name. Right. Like you know Jenny Ketchum, she was that she was Penny Flame, the porn star and stuff, and she she's also a cocaine alcohol. It turned out she was overlooked in that stuff. Um, but we called her not Penny. We called her Jenny. We called her Jennifer. And what what's your family call you? That, that's who. That's you. And it would it just it, it like cut through to her. Yeah. Huh. And she said when we when we start she was she's now a social worker with two kids. I mean she's married. Uh -huh. Amazing person. He, just oh such a great person. But she she recounts the story as that that was where we started. You you call you yeah. you reached out. And you tried to talk to me. Yeah. Not my veneer. <clears throat> Jason, maybe it's, maybe it's time for you to go back to being Herbert Linda Muller. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I didn't um, want anyone to know that, Michael. I was not ready. Radio is a little radio. <laughs> well, that's what my parents call me. Herbert. <laughs> Most people in radio these days call themselves by their real name in radio. It's yeah. interesting. Yeah. Yeah, I think I was a part of the because I remember Bubba the Love Sponge, and I was yeah. like, wait, did you did you did you call yourself that? What is going on here? Yeah. And then and then I found. Other radio people would there. Yeah, we, we we worked with a guy that was what was he the minister or something? Yeah, for sure. Yeah, and I was like, you're not you're not a minister. You're yeah. like a. I think there were like just like a dude, but there were like as a radio thing. Yeah, I think there were like three Bubba the Love Sponges. Oh, really? I swear, yeah. What? what a weird thing to is that a thing in Florida or something? People get called. I don't Love know. Sponge, unless, be right, know. unless the same guy worked in multiple. He could have. He did. He's a no, busy guy. No, I know, but I I feel like around the same time there were. Uh, oh, oh, don't quote me on that, but that's uh, how, that's how I remember it. Interesting. I ran into Cowhead, his old partner. That's right. <laughs> Wait, Cowhead was his partner. Yeah. Oh, I didn't know that. When I first met them, I was on that. Cowhead and Love Sponge. Yeah. Oh wow. Yeah, and then they became enemies or something. It was very weird. Oh, that for me. doesn't surprise me. Yeah. That's yeah. a thing that I can. Uh, I can attest to when it comes to radio beef. I think I learned from Anthony, no, Opie, mm. because he just seems so bummed out about working at Sirius and and all the people that he worked with. Like he hated, he didn't trust Sam, he hated Jim or, you know, he definitely didn't like Anthony anymore yeah, and he boy. didn't trust the company. And I remember I went, because this is when the big boss, Scott, was like, we want to give you your channel. And, you know, we we're going to name it Faction Talk after, you know, Faction with Jason Ellis. And I was like, what channel? And they're like, you know, Opie's channel. And I'm like, really? Like you're going to take the Opie channel name and turn it into Faction? And I remember Opie and I weren't really getting along, but I was like, that's going, that, I'm not interested in that. Like I really don't want to bum the dude out. And then I went to go tell him because I knew he was in the building and he was in the corner on this chair where he sits in the corner in the corridor. And I told him, I'm like, why are you always out in the corridor? He's like, they took my office. You know, and then somebody told me, and I don't know, because everyone lies at Sirius, but you know, he decided not to be in there. But I, I, I believe Obi, I reckon they probably like put extra people in his office and he was like, it's no longer my office. But he was so dark on everything. And we had the same age in it. Like I knew how much he was making, because I was, fighting to get that and it was a ridiculous amount of money and he was a so dying bummed it's a dying medium and i remember thinking don't you know i stopped because i didn't like bubba the love sponge i was like let mm -hmm. it go dude let it go because he's he made it and he's miserable he's probably happy now but he's out now that he's out of there but i just remember no longer wishing to have radio beef because at first it sounded cool this is the future Podcasting. You're, you're, some, that, what, uh, there's probably going to be a new incarnation. I was going to say there some, definitely is going to be a different. Something new is going to happen, yeah. but you're in it. Yeah. You're in it. It's, you, should, you should feel good about that. And it's, it's yours. Yeah. Yeah, then there's that. Yeah, just, um, yeah, I know you're saying we're in it, but it really is, we're trying very hard to get back into a into a comfortable position, but um, it's hard. It's, it's hard. very hard. It's yeah. very. It's it's not it's easy. It's not people what it think, was. That's people for sure. think you just turn the lights on and you're success. No, yeah. no, no. It's it's a hard business. And it didn't matter. All the years at Sirius didn't mean shit. Mm, it it doesn't mean it means something because those people are out there. Yeah, it but just, not as much as 
as you might I don't think. Know. Yeah, not as much you might think. As much as I thought. What else going on in the DMs? What's uh... oh, I don't have uh, Jason's DMs. Wait, that was the only me. question. That's that we the got? one that you sent me before right, the but show. There was a bunch of we asked them to put put some stuff out. Let's, let's, I think the, I think part of the part of the whatever the next thing is is when things are live, you got to give people a chance to interact a little bit. That's part of I think what's coming next too. Do we have anything on the? The YouTube, Katie. You know what I do, by I the know way? I didn't solicit for it. Hey, this would work for you guys. When I do a live stream, I go out on Twitter Spaces and take a call off Twitter Spaces. Oh, it's right. It's simple. You just plug it right through the system. We only just started doing this recently. I don't know why it took us so long to put it together that the, the pod is something we tape and put up in you know, however many yeah. days, and the Patreon is live, and people are calling us, and they're yeah. texting us, and all of a sudden we realize, wait, we have the same technology. And obviously it's sort of self-defeating to... Do a pod and then put it on Patreon immediately. But we—it's only been a couple of weeks now that we've told people you can watch us tape the pod live. Good. If you miss that, you'll get it when everybody else yeah, gets yeah. it. But this is this. Oh work. no, live is a live is a thing. It's an important thing. Yeah. And and to take the calls live too. That's right. think how close that is to radio. Right. Well, and let's pat ourselves on the back. Some people are frightened of. A lot of podcasters don't want to be live. I know. And we are- You're, you're radio guys. That's what we do. You, you should command this. Right. Question for Drew Pinsky. Yeah. Drew, yeah. I've no. just turned 42. I was always a binge drinker. Uh-oh. And I do have alcoholism in my family. Yeah. I've always had control. Wait, I've always had control of it enough to be successful. Mm. I'm weighing, I'm weighing stopping drinking completely. Mm. Because while I can casually drink at events, the binge part of me always will always live there, mm. I think. I'm not sure if that's the only way to turn that off. I'm pretty healthy uh, and my heart is important to my health is important to me. Yeah. I don't drink I don't drink the two wait, I well, don't I get it. I know what to okay. say. Good. So, so the, the the treachery of binge drinking is you have an illusion of control, right? You kind of feel like because you're not drinking that every day, you're not drinking all the time. Just when I go to the party on the weekend, and then I kind of lose control. I think I guarantee, in fact, that there he's had far more consequences from his binging than he is telling us, or even willing to admit to himself. And right. and that's the point you gotta you gotta be honest about. And if if that's enough to get you to stop, the great news is. Sometimes you maybe you haven't thrown the switch yet on on really losing control, and maybe you can just stop, right? If you can't stop, that's when you got to do something. That's when twelve step and other things, you know, cognitive behavioral therapy, binge drinking responds well to CBT, so you know cognitive behavioral therapy oh, okay. would work. But it's it's really about being honest about what the consequences have been and why you're now starting to think about stopping. And it's, if he's sending that message, he's already you you hear all the ambivalence in his question. Like I think maybe I'm sort of yeah, <laughs> kind yeah. of in control. You're not. You have the illusion of control, but you're yeah. not. Yeah, I, I was thinking as Jason was reading that in my life, just friends and you know acquaintances and stuff, I'd say probably 75% of the time when you get to the point where you're saying, maybe I should stop drinking, you should probably stop you, drinking. Not only that, everyone around you knows too. <laughs> and, they, and you always think you're, you're hiding it or have it in control. You don't want to get to that point. Everybody knows. Everybody's already well aware that this is an issue. Remember I said on your show the other day that you look gay to me? I am gayer than you, aren't I? I don't. I'm looking at you now, and yeah. I feel like if if it was a casual glance, you'd yeah. think, yeah, you're you're gayer than me. But if you really analyze both of us, <laughs> you'd be like, I don't know, man. The tough guy looks kind of overgroomed. You know what I mean? Like, why is his shoes painted? Yeah. There's little things yeah. where yeah, you'd look be at me. like, I, I, you're right. Yeah, I'm dressed you're like pretty a dude. stock. Yeah, I'm dude. Gay guys like a little flair. You <laughs> yeah, know? yeah, yeah. I feel I feel like if you have a good gaydar. You'd catch that I'm the gay one, but most people. But if we talk musical comedy, they'd they'd be confused. Oh, for sure, they'd be yeah. confused. Yeah, you're gay, so <laughs> you're singing opera. Yeah, like holy <laughs> flaming. I was the gayest straight man in America. You might be. Yeah, right. good effort, dude. Thank you. Nice play. Thank you. Uh, everybody wants to if you drew at Drew Pensky uh, Drew After Dark. What's That's your, Drew.com. The, yeah. But the show that I we have a streaming show too on Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday at three o'clock. In fact, I'm going to run go do that now. And it's really lately been on. I've been interviewing. It's been a really interesting show. I've been interviewing all the people who've been silenced during the COVID epidemic, and some of them have some eh, ideas I don't agree with. But I've learned something from every single one of them. Uh. And we've had all the names you've heard: Malone, McCullough, and Corey, and all those guys. But but even sort of more peripheral people we've been sort of that have gotten clamped down by somebody, 
I immediately go, I want to talk to that person. Why, why are they clamping down on that person? I, I, I need to hear different ideas. That's yeah. how I get to the truth. Sure. And I've learned something from everybody. And man, when you really look at what happened here, it is not a great, it's not a great story. It is not, Am I going to die from the vaccine? What, what have your, what's your situation? What have you had? I just got the vaccine. You, just the original series, just the two shots? Did I get a booster? We got a booster too. All and what, Moderna. And, and when did your cardiac thing kick in? Years ago. Okay. Uh, you'll be fine. It, it, the, look, the reality is this. But you're the, saying that it has happened to some people. Oh, yeah. A lot. But, it, but it's rare. And it's so people. The, but it so still happened. It happens. They're not being super forthcoming on this. Is, the data, this, the, the problem I'm having is the, the medical literature is all over the place. It's either too rosy or too dire. Yeah. It, it's because clinically, I've seen lots of stuff. It's not super common, but I've definitely, definitely seen stuff. Eh. Cardiac arrhythmias, Fuck. something we call neurasthenias, eh. myocarditis. Seen it for sure. One practitioner. So when I read literature, it's like, well, no, it's only good. It's all no side effects. I'm like, well, that's impossible. Yeah. That's not possible. And when I see it's going to, you know, these some of these people get very excited. It's going to kill everybody. No, it's not. No, it's not. There's a billion people, billions of people have been vaccinated. Vast majority fine. All right. But. If you're 17 or 25 or 38 year old male, how do I, as a physician, help that patient navigate the risk reward? Yeah, that's really hard to tell right now. It's very hard to tell, and so. But thankfully, the things you know is essentially gone now. I mean, everyone's had Omicron. It's much milder. It's it's we're yeah. just at all time lows. It, it's done its thing. It's, it's still crazy to know that somebody got really sick or died from getting it. They're, from you getting from Omicron getting, or getting, getting, the getting, getting the vaccine? Getting the vaccine. Yeah, like 100% that, is, that I remember happened. the first people saying that. I was like, fucking maniacs, you know what I mean? Yeah, but there's but, nothing in medicine that we don't hurt people with. Yeah. Nothing. Okay. You, you got to understand, it's always the risk reward we're trying to weigh out. Yeah. So again, we're Jason seeing things in black and white. Can yeah. you, how would you <clears throat> compare the side effects, whatever you want to call them, that we've seen from the vaccine to other vaccines, other things that lots of people get. We, my, my prediction is it was an emergency. Yeah. And so we rolled it out with, cut all sorts of corners that we would normally not cut. And as a result, saw some more stuff, I think, than we would otherwise accept. What I don't understand is why we're not going back and doing the, the science we normally do. I yes. don't understand that. And why aren't we being more clear about what because the risk is? Because they don't want to get caught for doing anything I, wrong. I, I, I don't know. I can't figure out. I, I don't know. That I don't think that. anybody's interested in hearing a story that doesn't, at some point along the way, probably early on, they made up their decision about what what was good and what was bad and what and, was right. And, and then they crushed really seriously important people for raising their hand and going, should we, is this, is so, should we do this or yeah. not? As, a, as opposed to doing what we normally do, which is like engage in dialogue. And yeah. they say it was a very odd time. And it was, you know, the way I characterize it, it was safety Uber Alice, which is already a dangerous thing, right? If you're going to put safety from one infectious disease above everything else, you're going to hurt people. Well, they did. Lo and behold. And then it became vaccine Uber Alice. Th this kind of narrow-minded, you know, one approach, that's not medicine. Yeah. It, it was a very odd thing. Like you said, it's part of the times, though. This is how we discuss things now. Just flip out. <laughs> fuck you, fuck you. Good conversation. Nothing learned. It, 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 and that went on in Australia too, which is yeah, weird. It went on everywhere. Yeah, I mean, I don't I, I blame wanna... them too. I remember my brother like sending me a video of they somebody had a mini ramp indoors and they all snuck out to ride it. I'm like, what world are we living in? These and guys didn't, are adults. It didn't do any, if it really had worked, I'd be like, all right, it didn't do anything. Yeah. And it was all well. There's a whole story there about where it came I from bet. and stuff. It's not good. It's not good. Where wow. it came from. The idea of lockdown. Oh, I see. Yeah. It was not a. It was not a well thought out. Or it was not. It was not good. People lost yeah. businesses, lost their and, livelihoods, and we sacrificed a generation of kids, and just on their educational, just yeah, the, you know, okay. fifteen to eighteen year olds, two years, yeah. and when we and all young people are having massive mental health stuff. I mean, every I just. Anxiety and depression, anxiety and depression, soap, and then doing substances to try to compensate for it. It's right. just, yeah, I mean, it's just so. You must have felt it. Yeah, it's, it's part of what it's part of what you're dealing with now. 
Yeah. Like you said, you you talked about how COVID screwed up so much of your plans. I mean, I feel like if there was no COVID, we'd still be working at Sirius. Oh, that's interesting. There's a very good chance, sure. Why? Because when COVID hit, they were uh, not selling cars. Oh. And they panicked and they cut like uh, oh. Jenny McCarthy and me. Oh. They cut people that were getting paid. That weren't wow. There. That's what I was told, but I also- I'm gonna have my little feeling about it, which is I'm disgusted. Oh yeah, fair enough. I'm disgusted because not that I blame them for making a business decision, but we did that. We put we put people through that for no good reason. Yeah. Disgu- yeah, because it, it's disgusting. Yeah, it also and we need to really look at that. Yeah, it ruined Ugh. us. Well, now, you're gonna you're gonna now you have to. Mm-hmm. Mm. Yeah. You owe it to us all to push through. Well, What's that telling what? I just wanted to to not push back against yeah. that, but to, for Which? the half for the half the people who are yelling at their car, you know, or their phone yeah. or the yeah. whatever right now. To yeah. me, the story, the devil is always in the details with the interpretations and stuff. To me, there was a thing that was happening in other countries. Yeah, it looked really, really bad. Yeah. Doctors here. I remember my wife because China was ahead of us. My wife has, does business in China. A guy mailed her um, a box of the disposable masks, yep, yep. and we sent them to all of our friends. And our friends in New York gave them to doctors. They yep. knew. They said, "I don't need this. I know a doctor is going to work without mm-hmm. this stuff." So, to me, in the broadest possible strokes, we need to try to keep the numbers. When we couldn't treat the disease at all, we uh, the whatever you want to call it, the virus. We need to keep the numbers as low as possible by any means possible so that our medical infrastructure and staff can deal with it. And then we get vaccinated. Right. Le- now let now unleash the dogs of right. war. We're gonna have to live with it now. And right. I still, in those broad, simple terms, support yes. everything that we did. Both turned out to be wrong. Mm-hmm. But I i I'm with you. I actually was supportive. I when they decided when they decided to th- shut shut down the state, I was like, oh, this isn't right, but I'm going to be a good citizen. I'm going to stand behind this. I know they're planning for the worst. Maybe I'm wrong. Maybe it is going to be worse than I think. And uh, it, and then they just wouldn't let up. Yeah, that was the problem. Right. I mean, I look look at. I, I always point to people to the um, <laughs> the um, women coming over the border from Ukraine into Poland. They, they were like this massive exodus, and the reporters were there with the microphones, and they'd put the microphone on the women's faces, and they go, well, the first thing they would say is, yeah, my son's, my little husband's back. It's terrible, terrible, terrible. But within 30 seconds, then they'd go, but these kids, they've been out of school for two weeks. Two weeks! We gotta get them back in school. Can you believe it? We gotta get them back in school immediately. And they put them in Polish-speaking schools because two weeks out of school was unacceptable. Eh. We did two years here yeah, in the state of California, no. it, it, Los Angeles. It really, it hurt people. And so that's the thing. It's the excesses. It's the excesses yeah. not being able to to have conversation and to adjust course and that well, kind of stuff. I think against one of the flaws of the democracy is that ultimately it, they are, be, once people got set on, we're open and everything up, psh, 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 mm-hmm. or no, won't somebody think of the children? Mm-hmm. The politicians ultimately do answer to voters. And I saw it. I remember the kids, you can't go on the playground. I know other kids are there. You're not going to do it because you're going to get sick. And then the second they went, oh, actually, no, it's an airborne thing. Now we know, touched up. We're like, get on that playground. And I still knew so many parents were like, I know what they said. I just don't feel totally comfortable. So I I do feel like I give the politicians a bit of a pass because they were taking their cues from the voters. The people who got freaked out could not get unfreaked out. Voters should not be making public health decisions. Right. That's a terrible idea. Yeah. Terrible, All right. terrible. Yeah. There it is. Bummer. Thanks for being has on the show, Has this been a bummer Drew. show? Have I, have I bummed everybody out? Yeah, I don't feel like we're going to get the ratings that you're after dark <laughs> appearance, but whatever. Thanks, everybody. Check out more Patreon shows, uh, patreon.com. Support, tell a friend. Support. Yeah, we'll be out there. Don't die. Yeah.